let me just talk in a really quiet, boring way. And then see what happens with my dog. Good morning, guys, so welcome. Anyway, it's true, it's the tone. When I talk like I'm getting ready to go outside, they think we're going outside. So anyways, welcome to today's video. We're heading out to do chores, but I wanted to show you guys something amazing. So we are just getting ready. We are just starting our day. Gabby's just gone off to school. And Sophie is already crocheting. And you guys, if you've been following her crochet story, um, you know that she just started, just before Christmas, she started crocheting and she picked it up like that. And by picking up, I mean like anybody can cro- <laughs> I'm not talking to you. So what I mean by picking it up is that she literally, I literally showed her a couple of stitches and poof, she picked it up. I. I've never taught somebody to crochet with the least amount of instruction ever. She, I told, showed her how to do a chain, how to do a single crochet, how to do a double crochet. Just double. Oh yeah, maybe just a chain and a double crochet. And then she just picked it up. She uh, picked it up. So every day she just sits down and she makes stuff. And let me show you what she made. So a couple of days ago she was like, I think I'm going to make a duck. And she made this duck. I mean, she doesn't have eyes for it. She didn't have yellow fur, yellow wool. But she made this duck. She has this whole set up here on the couch and this is her duck. Like it is so freaking cute. Isn't it cute? I should make some legs for them. Legs are so easy, but isn't that cute? She's going to buy some eyes and put some eyes in there. It's so cute. So then she made this yesterday just so fast. So today she just whips up a, a white one because it's the closest color to yellow she has. She just whipped that up this morning. Here's her duck. So this is the one she just made now. Like. I've never made animals before, little baby animals or any kind of animals, and she's made a bunch. What's, what else did you make? Octopi. Oh, she made octopus, a bunch of octopi, a whole little basket of them. Plus, I think she has more than just a basket of them. No, those, are those are the only ones you have? The reason I wanted to show you this was not because Sophie is so amazing at crochet, which she is doing amazing at crochet. Sophie clearly has an aptitude for crochet. She picks it up just like that. And through this journey of YouTube, I've heard from a lot of kids and a lot of people who have struggled through the school system and not feeling like they don't fit in and feeling like they're dumb. And that's, and that's the biggest thing. I hear from a lot of kids that they feel like they're dumb because they don't get the school stuff. They don't understand it the way it's being taught in, in their class. And I just want to say that it is okay not to have an aptitude for something or not to be good at something, even if it's something that's important and that you have to get through. Not having an aptitude for it doesn't mean that you're dumb. It means that that, that, particular, that particular class or the way it's being taught is just not the way your brain needs to learn it. But also, you are so unique and so original that you have a million different aptitudes built inside of you that are just waiting to be discovered. And that if you have an aptitude for it, you have an aptitude for it. And if you don't have an aptitude for it, it makes it so much harder to learn. So go out there and do as many cool new things as you can do and find what you have an aptitude for. Find what you are good at. But wait, I wanna show you guys what I've been working on the last few days. Actually, yesterday I started this. But I wanna make a new kind of a blanket and I wanted to show you guys what I've been crocheting. Let's see if you can guess what it is. It's going to be a blanket. Do you see what it's gonna be? This is only one color. I'm. Uh, this is just one color that I've made. This is gonna, uh, I'm going to make a whole bunch of these little things in different colors. But do you know what it is? It's a Lego brick. So I'm gonna make a Lego blanket. Isn't that cool? I am so excited for the spring thaw. We do deep litter method for the chickens and the goats, which means adding more and more bedding on top of old bedding. Because as the stuff underneath decomposes, it creates heat. So Sorry, when- dog got hurt. But no, she was just screaming because Ruby left her. So <laughs> my dog is weird. So when goats or chickens burrow down inside their bedding, the heat from underneath keeps them warm and it's really, really cold. So while I love that and it makes me feel better knowing that they're warm, I also hate it. It doesn't smell at all. Um, I hate it because in the spring there's a huge clean, but it's getting to the point now where like, I'm feeling like I wanna get it all cleaned out. I'm still stealing from my horse kit to make my goat breeding kit, my goat kitting kit, and 
and I took a lot of syringes. I took a lot of needles because the only time I use needles on horses is for like banamine. Um, but I use a lot of needles for the goats. But the other thing that I need is this. You guys are probably shocked that I have Preparation H, which is a hemorrhoid cream in my horse first aid kit. And I do, and I'll tell you why. So a long ago, um, I bought this for the horses for Storm because you guys remember when his, he used to rub his tail? I did so much research and so much studying. I studied everything about it. And you know what it turned out to be? Underneath his tail would get dirty. And that's like the thing that I clean religiously on all of our horses now because I Hi, delved buddy. so far into that whole process. But someone suggested that I get Preparation H for under his tail and just to see if it would stop him for from rubbing and I bought it and I tried it. It didn't make a difference what because I bought it like a long time ago. Ew, puppy. So do you know oh, wait, I got to Okay, we have a puppy and fix his blanket. It's cold today. So I'll I'll just work on the gate while I wait for you. So did you guys know what preparation H is good for with goats? I got here first but Sophie won't let me go in. It's a battle. It's a battle now because she wants to find her very second goose egg. There could be one in the hut. Wow. That's him honking. Yeah. He's telling you something, Sophie. There's an egg. Oh, she. She, she. yeah. Oh, man. She. Zoe. Zoe, Miss Zoe. Go look. All right, come in quick. Do you think she's going to find an egg? end fast like we gotta get over this whole thing she's looking for more so let's write down what today is Tuesday so it's Tuesday she was telling you she was like they're noisy oh yes she says it's mine all right we got three now I found it I knew it was coming Oh, listen to her honk. The reason that Preparation H is so good in a goat kitting kit is because if a goat happens to tear when they're giving birth, which happens, especially with first fresheners and singleton babies, which is what if I'm probably going to get. Goose, this would be in the... I know. Actually, I found some geese eggs for us to buy, Sophie. The kind that we want. Wait till you guys see the kind of goose that we're going to get. So anyways... Um, if a goat ten, if a goat happens to tear during delivery, preparation H helps to shrink up the tear, like helps to heal it up and shrink it all up and make it not bleed as much. And it's so valuable to have. Hello. <laughs> so uh, these are the things that I stole from the horse first aid kit that I typically don't use. I like to have some alcohol in here so that I can use it. Oops, so that I can use it for. Um, sterilizing things like scissors and other stuff. I have the Preparation H, which I am going to definitely keep in here. I have a large syringe for drenching. Drenching is basically just giving them medication. These are my alcohol swabs. And then I got a bunch of more needles. Oops, these are all the small needles that I have left. And I filled a needle, I filled a syringe needle with banamine because banamine is really good for pain relief in goats, but there's it's very specific in what situation you have to use it for. So I'm gonna just keep that down here. I kept the banamine in the hey, in the horse barn. Yeah, you have that bucket. I only have one bucket. Yeah. So anyways, we are filling up. So I'm gonna keep this little bag here in case, oops, in case I need it. I use like baggies, Ziploc baggies for things. Like I have a bunch of gloves, just regular gloves. So I have a few things left to get. I have to get some lube, but I have to get very specific lube for the goat. I need to still find it, so I don't have that yet. And then, Oh, I need to get like a garbage bag, just things from inside the house, like garbage bags so we can throw stuff in. Be careful of the egg. 
I need to get. Sophie is very worried about her egg. I need to get a paper and pen, like a notebook, which I'm gonna keep in there for like birthing notes that I need to take in the heat of the moment so I don't forget like whose baby belongs to you. Um, because sometimes when you have like same colored does and same dad, same genetics, you can end up with same colored goats with different moms, which is kind of freaky. So I'm gonna get some little collars just in case or I'm gonna end up putting like sweaters on some or I'll, I'll crochet some little thing to go around their neck or I don't know. I'll figure that out, but just simple things. Lube, lube and simple things is what I have to find. I have this rope that I wanna get or that I have, it's up in the goat barn, I have to find it or up in the horse barn, I have to find it. It's because a lot of people use, if a kid gets stuck then it's, you can use this little contraption thing but in a miniature goat, it's really hard to get that thing inside them because it's so big and bulky so you got your hand in there and then you've got um this little contraption it can be hard so if you have this like little string it's basically about the size of baler twine and i could even use baler twine but you can hook around you can put it in your fingers and put it in and slide it in and hook it around at the baby's feet to help pull to give you traction i just have so much to tell you guys today <laughs> i have so much energy our first dough to be due is little blossom here and she's due in a in a week from tomorrow right she's back. due in eight days you guys eight days this little thing is gonna have babies look at, my egg, though. Look at her egg though so the reason that we got confused i think um and thinking that this was a duck egg this giant egg was a duck egg is because we've hatched geese eggs before or at least we hatched one and it was big and round but I've since found out that she's just new to laying, which is what happens with our chickens too. When they're first new, their eggs are always smaller and tinier. And so, yeah. But anyways, um, contrary to popular belief, I don't plan, I absolutely plan to be here when our goats give birth. I know that in the wild, goats give birth all the time. I know that they have like... Uh, lots of deaths in the wild because there's nobody there to help them but the thing about our goats it's so different than being in the wild is that they're domesticated goats they're they're domesticated and domesticated animals have a whole different set of criteria i don't want to intervene in any way that i don't have to i want the goats to do it themselves it's so much healthier for the goats it's so much better for everybody involved but we have domesticated goats um and we're giving birth in a cold season so it's more likely that we're gonna have to intervene and dry off baby goats so that they don't freeze to death because a mama goat in this extreme temperature in this domesticated it would be impossible for them to dry off a baby goat sufficiently especially at night but did you guys know i read this today that goats unlike other animals tend to give birth more during the day and that goats this explained to me so much goats personality holy moly Goats are so prissy. They, what? So are ducks, she says. So are go geese. That they want everything to be perfect. So they will hold off yeah, until it's little. the nicest, sunniest, warmest day before they'll give birth because they don't want to give birth. Instinctually, it's better to give birth in the sun so your babies don't die. Um, also, they like to give birth during the day when it's not as, like the predators aren't as active. They like to, like everything good, that's what a goat chooses. Where you guys know a lot of species are always in the middle. Even people tend to be more in the middle of the night. So that made me happy because that's my biggest fear that a goat will give birth in the night because it's already happened to somebody that I know. And so many people online in the last few weeks have been having babies that have been frozen to death because the owners didn't know that they were giving birth in the night. I don't want to, I'm not going to intervene more than I need to, but, uh, but I'm going to be there and I am going to help dry off kids if I need to and suction them if I need to because that's what you do with domesticated goats goats and leaving I'm gonna I want to say this because it's so important but not being there is so irresponsible not being there to help and to dry goats in extreme temperature who rely on their people for food for shelter for everything they don't have the same instincts of course they're going to have instincts for birth but it's not the same as if they live like wild goats so just like with dogs I've seen it so many people when oh, Sophie's like shut up to open the door She's like, stop talking! Oh, you little monster. Yeah. Nope. Ooh. Oh, 
Whoa. Outside, outside. <laughs> Get outside, you little rug rat. So in horse news, Sophie's doing a, a course online in horse stuff. So it's a horse course and it should take about two weeks to do. It's called horse safety. What is it called? Uh, horse behavior and safety. It's a youth course for like 13 to 17 year olds. And the units are like introduction, introduction to horse behavior versus wild versus stabled. Oh, wild versus stabled. And then how horses seen here. Go down. Um, unit three is herd behavior, how horses interact with each other. Unit four, horse handling, basic safety, which she already knows. Um, rider safety, unit five, unit six. That's rider slash helmet safety. Yeah. Uh, safe trailering basics, fire safety, safety around the barn and paddocks. Is that it? Um, and returning from an injury. So a lot of this stuff she already mm -hmm. knows. She'll actually get a certificate for this course. It's also really good for people who, young people who are hoping to have a career in the horse industry. So anyway, she's gonna take this course. I'm excited. I might do it with her. Most of it she's already gonna know. She's already learned so much of this stuff, but it's interesting, but it's good to refresh your memory. And also there's new stuff in there, fire safety, stuff like that, that she hasn't learned yet. So we're gonna do it. And I'm excited that she gets this opportunity. Doing something new in the horse department. We're headed out because uh, Sam bought five bales of hay, five brown bales of hay, and we figured it would last us till February, and it's almost February, and we've just run out. So uh, the guy that we had them delivered to doesn't want to drive his tractor in the winter to bring it, plus it's really difficult to put them where we need them put, where we had them before because of all the snow and stuff. So we're gonna go pick up our own bale of hay. So that's where we're headed right now. It's gonna be our first experience putting it on the back of our track, truck and then putting it in the field. Can we use the tractor to put it in the field? I'm just gonna back it up. Back and then it. roll that sucker in? Roll it <laughs> yeah, so that's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be our first time doing this. It's gonna take all of us as a family. Also, uh, Sophie did the first unit in that test and we did the test <laughs> and we got one wrong. It was out of three and we got one wrong. And this is the question. And I'm gonna ask you guys, I didn't read it, Sophie read it. I don't know if she missed the question, if I had, a, and it doesn't let you go back, so I couldn't read it to find out what the answer is, but I'm gonna ask you guys the trivia right now. So this question in Sophie's horse course was this. What is not a normal horse behavior? Rolling, pawing, cribbing, or making noises? Like neighing and whinnying and, and making noises. So those are the answers. I'm not gonna tell you guys what we put, until the very end of this video. Hopefully this is not the end of the video. <laughs> I never know when it's gonna end. But put down, comment your comment, your things now, and I'll tell you. It doesn't tell you what the right answer was. It just tells you if you got it wrong. And then you can do it twice. And if you get it wrong twice, it doesn't tell you the, the answer. And it doesn't let you go back to read because I tried to do that. So I'll tell you what the two answers that we picked were, and then you tell me what you pit or what you think it is that is a lot of round bales you probably can't see but there are a lot of round bales at this farm well we did it sam did it he tied that sucker on i was so nervous the whole time driving with it but we got another bale for them whoa it's slippery come help me take this hay down. yeah you have to help me it takes three people we just have to walk alongside of it come on best friend didn't care about the okay so uh, come here and look at this sam so uh, we are a week away from baby goats or at least one baby goat and one baby goat all right and my camera system stopped working oh, oh. <laughs> sam experience <laughs> sam experience oh, stop me. Sam experienced the goat attack. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so I asked Sam to come down and figure out my goat barn camera because they're outside all day and I don't want to... It's red lighting. What does that mean? It's a red light. 
Do we need to change, move that? Sam says that it's not getting enough sunlight, but it's been like this the whole winter. And yesterday was so sunny. Ellie got out and she just climbed through that water thing. See, <laughs> just like that. And she's like, oh, I'm not going in there. You think you have to reboot it? Mom, what does that want? He did not actually want you. Oh. So what happened was we asked Gabby to help us take the hay down and she ran for it. Can you get your your baby goat out of here? Okay, me and Timbit have a love-hate relationship. Sylvia's so ow, a love-hate relationship with love our him. with our Happy. buck. I love our buck. He's just cuddly and sweet. He doesn't realize Ow! Or he just wants to fight me. <laughs> he wrestles me and I know it's common. I actually have seen a lot of people say that that's normal buck behavior. I get that, but his horns hurt. He doesn't like ever get mad, put his head down and chase us. So he doesn't do anything like that. It's just that when he's standing by us and he wants me to pay attention to him, he puts his head down. A lot of people say like, it's just playing behavior. It's that he wants your attention. He wants you to play with him. And uh, it's not fun though, because when it's fun, it's fun. But when I'm not paying attention, he rams his horns into the back of my legs. All right, Mom, I'm going back up. That's always such a shock. I was gonna go to the dollar store. Yeah, I'm coming. All right, so, so 10 minutes, okay? All right. Oh. Wait, take Ellie, you brought her down. No, you can have her. We'll take this in and charge it up and see what happens. All right, well, thank you for looking at it. The only time Ellie jumps up like this is when she's scared. Come here. Come here. Let me get you. Oh. She just kissed me and said, thank you, thank you. And I know it's because she's scared of the goats. She's so brave if we have the goats and we're holding on to them. And then she's like, I will kill you. But if she's all alone and she doesn't have me to protect her, then she's scared of them. It's okay. Yeah, she's okay. It's okay. Yes. Oh, the goat's on my back. <laughs> yeah, it's the buck.